There is no truly 100% objectively correct interpretation of a piece of media. Everyone always has a take and even if the creator comes down from on high and tells their side of the story, it's ultimately just another reading of the work. With that having been said, there are people whose takeaway from a work is just, well, wrong. There are a lot of ways people can miss the point something is trying to make. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 8 TV scenes everyone always gets wrong. Number 8. Jerry and Pals go to jail in Seinfeld the selling point about Seinfeld was that it was a show about nothing. While in some cases this was true, what the show turned out to actually be about was four funny but absolutely terrible human beings and their mundane problems caused by them being terrible human beings. Many fans miss out on this, a running theme you're going to notice on this list, and so to them the ending comes out of nowhere and makes no sense. Now granted the finale does have quite a few logical flaws, ask any lawyer worth their salt and they'll tell you that the trial is a nightmare of legal flaws and fallacies. But the idea was to end the series with Jerry and Pals getting their comeuppance for nine seasons of being mundanely infuriating, which puts it quite a bit above other comedies about so-called horrible people who never really face consequences for their nonsense. Number 7. Daenerys Burns King's Landing in Game of Thrones the final season of Game of Thrones was a kind of disastrous ending that we don't see that often. Plenty of great shows have bad endings, but season 8 of Game of Thrones didn't just disappoint fans, it took a show that ruled the damn world and wiped it off the face of pop culture forever. How the show handled Daenerys' fall from grace was not well executed at all. But the idea that her burning down King's Landing came completely out of nowhere is simply wrong. This is a woman who has only ever had and needed one solution for her problems. If it's in my way, it burns. King King's Landing was in her way, so King's Landing burned. Daenerys's fall represents a character's most admirable trait, in her case her unwavering conviction and belief in her own righteousness, being turned into her greatest failing. Turns out that people with that kind of conviction can be real a-holes when they're suddenly on the other side of the argument. Number 6. Number 6's Escape in The Prisoner the Prisoner is a show that's very easy to get wrong, since its particular type of insanity is the kind that looks like they're making things up as they go along. Audiences were, understandably, expecting the ending of the show to answer at least one question they'd been asking since the whole mess began. What the actual hell is going on? Well, they didn't get that, because something that audiences missed while asking that question is that they're the only ones who give a damn about getting answers. Number 6, our protagonist would just like to not be a prisoner in this madcap nightmare of a town anymore. Some answers would be nice, which is why we do occasionally see him looking for some, but one can imagine that after 17 episodes of getting messed around, number 6 would really stop caring. So in the last episode, he finally manages to escape number 1 and their cavalcade of mind games and manipulations driving off into the sunset. The show was never interested in giving answers, so why should the audience? Number 5. William's Fidelity Test in Westworld the thing about having a cast that's mostly made up of robots that are specifically designed to feel and act as human as possible, to the point where they start developing sentience, is that the writers can start to play around with who is and isn't a robot. Now, if you'd seen the original 1973 movie, or if you're one of those weirdos who read the original novel by Michael Crichton, then you probably already know the twist that William, the man in black, is one of the hosts and was unaware of it the whole time. But the show knows damn well that 90% of you didn't even know there was a movie, let alone a book. So the scene in season 2 where William is subjected to the staff's famous fidelity test at the hands of his supposedly dead daughter Emily came as a shock to everyone. Was he a machine the whole time? Then how did he even have a daughter, let alone manage to kill her? Well, as it turns out, stated by Emily's actress Katia Herbers, this is the show messing with our perception of time again. The scene takes place an indeterminate amount of time in the future, where at some point either one or both of them were replaced with hosts. Number 4. The Ending in The Sopranos Man oh man is this ending infamous. For those who don't know, seeing as how this ending came a long time ago, the ending of the hit HBO series The Sopranos sees our protagonist Tony Soprano sitting down for dinner with his family, knowing full well that he's living on borrowed time. His mob buddies have deemed him a liability, and are no doubt planning to, well, do what the mob does best when they deem someone a liability. Except the show never gives you that closure. You don't even know when the door to the diner opens and Tony looks up that it's the mob or his daughter showing up late. The 
screen goes to black right as he looks up. And then boom, show over. Thanks for six seasons, folks. Have fun with Game of Thrones in four years. Yeah, people were pissed. They screamed that they wanted closure for Tony's story, but the creator of the show, David Chase, held firm, deeming closure to be unimportant. Was it his daughter walking through that door or the mob? It honestly doesn't matter, says Chase. And honestly, we can kind of see his point. I mean, obviously, Tony's dead. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen. It probably was his daughter walking through that door, but Tony can never be sure, just as the audience can never be sure. However much time he has left, Tony Soprano will live that time terrified of when his chickens will finally come home to roost. Number 3. Steven Sparing the Diamonds in Steven Universe Online discourse about Steven Universe is most aptly compared to a dustbin full of used nappies that is on fire. Everyone that has an opinion on this show has a tendency to state that opinion in as toxic a way as possible, especially if you ask them about the ending to the show's original run. To a lot of fans, the show's pacifistic nature was always at odds with its galactic war premise, and to those same fans, the ending is the worst example, with Steven literally talking down White Diamond from ruling the universe with an iron fist. But it's important to keep in mind a few things. 1. Steven sparing them is not forgiving them. Very big difference. Talking them down was simply his best option because, and the show is quite clear about this, fighting the diamonds would have been suicide. Steven would have lost, badly. Sure, Steven Universe Future would later clarify that he either did or currently does have the ability to destroy the diamonds, but that's just not in his nature. Also, and this might be a bit of a meta-ing too far, but there is no way that Cartoon Network was going to let this show for little kids end with a triple homicide. That just flat out was never going to happen. Number 2. The One Who Knocks in Breaking Bad these last two entries are the most egregious examples we have by a country mile. Walter White has become an icon, but sadly in the same way that Tony Soprano, Tyler Durden and the last entry on this list have become icons. Objects of veneration by a very particular kind of men who completely miss that they are not meant to like these characters at all. Just look at how these fans prop up the I am the one who knocks scene from Breaking Bad as a symbol of badassness, when in reality, Vince Gilligan and his team wrote that scene to show Walter as well what he is. A sad pathetic man playing at what he thinks a badass looks like. Which, judging by this scene, is someone who angrily shouts down his own wife when she dares to voice an opinion he doesn't like. Walter White is one of the most compelling protagonists in television history, but he is most certainly not a character to aspire to be, and the rant you all adore so much is one of the biggest proofs of that. Number 1. Pickle Rick in Rick and Morty what was meant to represent the epitome of Rick Sanchez's flaws as a character was instead co-opted by a fandom hellbent on missing the bloody point of the whole thing. Pickle Rick as an episode, as a concept, was made with one purpose, to expose Rick for the sad, lonely, emotionally stunted man-child he is. He turns himself into a pickle for the sole motive of getting out of having to go to therapy. He then goes on this insane adventure where he builds himself a body out of rat guts, fights a building full of armed soldiers, blows up that building full of armed soldiers, and then finally makes makes it to his therapy session, where the therapist proceeds to give Rick the dressing down of his life. Now, granted, the fact that Rick takes nothing away from this dressing down but eye-rolling annoyance in the long run might be why so many fans miss the point being made here. Pickle Rick is a truly hilarious episode of a truly hilarious show, but a good many of its hardcore fans don't realise that the episode is laughing at them, not with them. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then please do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.